paranormal Karen. She's so spooky, paranormal Karen. Funny too, paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah, cha cha cha. Hey everybody, welcome to Paranormal Karen. Um, this is the podcast. This is the one I've been working on. I've been deep diving for days. Um, the other hair house cleaning real fast. Uh, if you want more paranormal stuff, this is paranormal Karen. Go to karenrontowski.com or paranormalkaren.com or psychicstandup.com. Sign up for my email. You can get other podcasts. You can sign up for my Patreon. You can, uh, get my comedy dates. I'm blowing through that fast because this is the one podcast you want to listen to and you want to send it to people that don't listen to paranormal podcasts and you can listen to it and roll your eyes and laugh at me the whole way, but please listen. Um, it's going to run along the lines of conspiracy, but not really, because I don't know if you guys notice, uh, but since they did away with QAnon, which was the um, thing to throw all conspiracy theorists under the bus, conspiracy theorists has hit pretty close to 80 to 90 percent. So just give this a listen. Just make notes and notice um, what I'm talking about is going into uh, uh, be a parent in July. So there you go. I'm picking a date. So for years now, you've been hearing the conspiracy about digital currency, us moving to a digital currency system. And for those of you that worry, oh, the government's not going to track us, or if they do, they're already doing it because look at our phones or they already know what we're doing. Hold on. It's about to move to the next level and you need to know what this is. So you can go to fednow.org. I believe it's a dot org. And in July, this is the system that is going to be enacted or turned on or however you want to say it. I'm going to put in a side note here. I don't know if you all heard, but the guy that created Cash App was stabbed to death and five other crypto bosses have disappeared. So just hold on to that fact. So the Federal Reserve Bank is putting out ads. You can go see them as usual. They're bad. They're not only bad. They look like an ad you'd see in a movie that is like a parody of something going wrong with the government. And what the big selling point on this is instant payments. Your money is now not going through a third party. It's not going through Cash App. It's not going through PayPal. It's going straight through the Federal Reserve Bank, and it will be done in 20 seconds. Okay? Is that, did you need your money to go faster? It's going to go in 20 seconds with no stopping, no third party, no nothing. Um, I want to say something else about this. The way they're going with this and the way this Fed now is actually going to really be implemented is it's going to start with the poor. Keep that thought. Here we go. So as the banks fail, they're going to say your bank could fail and you won't get your money. But don't worry if you're in Fed now, we've got you covered in seconds. We're all the money. So don't even worry about the bank. Its purpose is to take over the payments between individual and businesses. So if you're buying something on uh, Walmart or, uh, anywhere. It's just sort of to take over that payment. If you go through PayPal, PayPal takes a percentage. Stripe takes a percentage. They all take, uh, uh what Zelly, they all take a percentage. So now you don't have to worry about that. You're going right through no more Venmo, no more cash app, no more PayPal, Zelly. Somebody just sent me a check on something. I can't remember what it was access check or something. And they took $5 and it was like, really? Um, the federal government, will now have access to every single transaction you process. Now, keep in mind, these other apps are going to be doing it anyways. In other words, it's going to go through PayPal. It's going to go through all these apps. So it is going to go through Fed now anyways. So anybody that says, I'm not dealing with Fed now, I'm not getting that app. Um, it's also going to be called the Banking for All app. You will be going through it anyways. I'm going to drop a person to follow here. He was on um, YouTube and I went through all his videos and he was amazing. So it's at... Just J Woodfin, J U S T J W O O D F I N. He has a fantastic voice, by the way, so easy to listen to. But he was putting up short videos, which was one of the places I was really collecting information among a bunch of stuff on 
TikTok and from FedNow. By the way, go to YouTube and put in FedNow. And what comes up for them is literally what a guy that I think is supposed to look like the wacky professor in a bow tie. Going to tell you a quick bow tie story. And he's talking about how great this app is ridiculous looking. I'm going to tell you when I was in college and I I studied communications, there was one class that no one wanted to take and it was the hardest class and you had to take it. And I took it and I um, was a terrible student. And the professor called me out at the end of the year and he said, Hey, I want to tell you something. He said, you're one of my favorite students, which was amazing because I was probably failing the class. And he goes, you don't care what anyone thinks. You just stand up and say whatever you want. (laughs) Which I think I was drunk during his class and probably did that. And he goes, I want to pass on to you the one piece of information that has never failed me wrong and has been the most important thing I have remembered in all my years. Don't ever trust a man wearing a bow tie. I don't know if he was joking because he didn't laugh. But anyways, that's exactly who they put this guy in a bow tie and it looks ridiculous. Okay. So follow just Jay Woodfin. Um, the bank for all app legislation. That's what it's called. Sorry. I said it was an app. It's a legis- legislation is supposed to allow inclusion of anyone to establish a federal bank account without even using an ID or a social security number. So basically when I said this is going after the poor, that's exactly who they're going to rope in first. You could be an illegal alien. You don't have to be an American system. Um, and the pull is going to be no third party bank fees. This is going to be just your money just being spent. Yay, poor people, no fees, right? Uh, I'm going to make a prediction here. They're going to have an incentive for people to sign up. This is not from anything I heard, but this is what my brain is telling me. Not even a psychic prediction, a logic prediction. They're going to have a um, $100 goes to you if you sign up, something like that. But now, like I said, they're going to start with the poor. That's how they're going to do it. Now, in case you haven't been watching this, the bigger banks have been buying up the smaller banks in their debt. So the government is going to print a whole bunch of money and bail out those banks, and then they will all also be connected to FedNow. So FedNow is just going to be a part of everything. So now, what are they going to do now that they have all your money? Well, first of all, your taxes... They will know everything. There will be no more hiding money. There will be no more Venmoing your friend that cut your hair outside of the salon, 20 bucks or whatever, a hundred bucks. Um, they're going to do away with cash. We can already see that happening, but they will know every single transaction and you won't be able to hide your money anymore. Also, um, anything connected to crypto right now seems like it's going to fail. Now, I want to tell you something else about the government having access to your money and your transactions. And this is the part you don't realize. They will be able to stop any transactions and they will be able to take money from you. They are the boss now of your money. A lot of people don't know this, but if you list your business as a psychic or if you sell essential oils, it is in the fine print that PayPal can not only end your account, but confiscate your money. Same thing with Stripe. If you want to read through the hundreds of pages and you work in the metaphysical field, they can stop your account and take all the money. So if any of you out there use Stripe or PayPal, keep those accounts low. I immediately get my money out of them. I rarely have bigger than a hundred dollar balance in PayPal for that reason, even though that's not what I'm listed under and that's not what I do. I don't want them to decide what I'm doing is wrong. Um, 
Now, a while ago, there was talk about the Federal Tax Act, which was a new system that was going to replace the tax system. They were going to get rid of the IRS and then just have a sales tax. So you would have tax on nothing, but your sales tax would be anywhere between 23 to 30 percent on anything you buy. You could buy whatever you want. You'd be in control of your Monday. You, you would know at the end of the year you didn't have all that. But also remember, that means the government can raise those taxes at any time without telling you. Um, so now um, the Fed, I'm sorry, I'm saying um, too much. I got all excited and I've been taking in this information all morning and I'm trying not to forget it. So now that the government has all track of your purchases, it can cancel them at any time. So you're thinking, well, what do I care? I'm not purchasing anything illegal. So how does this affect me? Well, here's a simple way it could affect you. After COVID, they started messing with a lot of natural and holistic health things. For example, if you don't know what NAC is, N-A-C, uh, it's a, uh, it's a type of amino acid and a building block of proteins that are used throughout the body. When taken as a supplement, it usually for, is in a form of N something I can't pronounce, NAC. The body makes this into cysteine and then glutathione, a powerful antioxidant. Basically, if you were talking to holistic people and you had COVID, this was a very, very important um, supplement to be taking. I took it when I had COVID and it was that and the other one was, um, um, geez, I can't remember. It's right in there in the cabinet. So anyways, these supplements are now being attacked by the FDA and are probably going to be taken off the market because they don't want you choosing what supplements you're taking. They want you choosing what prescriptions they're going to be giving you. So the FDA is trying to get rid of it. Um, there's also one more thing here. Everything is open to human error or human bias. Okay. And that's the story I'm getting to next. So if someone at the bank puts in the wrong amount of money. That's a difference between any of it. So if someone forgets a zero on your account, all of a sudden you don't have as much money as you thought. Ask people in China how the federal monetary system works, because a lot of them woke up one morning and there was no money in their account. And have you ever tried to get something straightened out like that by the government? It can't be done. Okay. Do you think you may have made someone mad? Do you think you are dating someone's girlfriend or boyfriend who just crossed someone? I am bombarded with stories of ex-girlfriends or new girlfriends or boyfriends or angry ex-husbands doing terrible things. Those could be your employees that are having access to your money. So Nothing is secure. So now I'm going to make a big leap here, but I want you to follow me and I'm going to make this very clear. This next part is neither a pro or anti-vax statement or story. I just want you to hear the story. Okay. Some of you may remember the Canadian truckers and they were all blocking uh, the roads in and out. They put all the trucks, they stopped the city and there was so much misinformation. First of all, they were said to be, they were not, they were putting up against vaccine mandates for a different reason. But if you were watching any of the mainstream media news, if you were watching Comedy Central kept taking jabs at them, not knowing what they were talking about, because something people didn't know is there was already there's already a passport type system for truckers between Canada and the United States, something like this. Please put in the comments if I'm presenting this wrong or it's different, but they were against the mandates, not the vaccine because 89% of truckers were vaccinated. So literally truckers have a higher vaccination rate than any country or anything like that. So listen past don't get upset about whether you're pro-vax or anti-vax. You need to listen past that. 
So the truckers, they were, you know, just like anyone else, we can learn from them here in this country, whether we're talking about health care or um, anything we want to. Uh, people, especially in America, feel so um, sort of powerless right now. But if you look at other countries, if you look what France is doing, that's amazing. If you look at Iran, uh, if you look at any of these countries, people are out in the street and they're changing things. But the truckers are different. And here is why the truckers really scared the politicians because they had the power. Let me tell you something. Me and my mother flew to Washington or we took buses to Washington. I flew home and we protested the Iraq war with millions of people. Millions of people all over the world tried to stop our invasion of Iraq. And what happened? No one cared. In fact, I cannot watch MSNBC, Nicole Wallace, the war criminal who was the spokesperson for George W. Bush, who lied about weapons of mass destruction, a million Iraqis dead, a bunch of our soldiers dead. And she's sitting there looking her down at her nose at Donald Trump, which there's nothing good about Donald Trump, but really that takes a lot of hubris. So let's listen to what the truckers did. They shut down everything. Um, now you look at black lives matter. I don't know what they accomplished. Roe V Wade. Everyone has been out protesting. Ask yourself what has been accomplished. We're doing this the wrong way. And that does not need to be violent protests because that was some of what the media was showing that was a hundred percent wrong. If you go off the mainstream media, go off cable and started watching the other channels, what you would learn is they were actually more like hippies. They were said to be Nazis. They were said to be Trumpers. They were said to be anti-vaxxers. All that was completely wrong. Even uh, Newsweek had to go in and do a story about how this was not Nazis. It was not all white people. It was nothing like that. And it was one of the most peaceful process, protests there ever was. Regular Canadians uh, heard all the warnings and went down and talked to the truckers and started to agree with them and worked with them once they spoke with them. Again, don't let vaccines split you here. And I promise you, that's all they want. MSNBC, Fox News, any of these, all they want is for you to hate your neighbor. If we are in a fight of good and evil right now, which I kind of believe we are, it is not about a monster and you or you or them or you and your neighbor, that is good and evil is inside and evil is not being able to look at your neighbor that made a different choice and say, Hey, you're okay anyways, or Hey, I'm going to back you up if there's a problem. That's what we have to start looking at. Cause that's all they were trying to do. So Trudeau put out so much misinformation and took so many attacks on these truckers and everybody ran for it. So what they were against um, was a vaccine passport, a restriction exemption program, which is the same thing that is somewhat like if we go to digital currency, that's not where that's stopping before. Um, they tried to go after everyone. They tried to go after the towing companies they tried to go after the insurance companies and the towing companies stood behind the truckers and said, those are our employees. We are not pulling their trucks out of there. We're leaving them. Uh, just know these people are doing a peaceful process. Over a million dollars was given to the truckers through GoFundMe and GoFundMe froze that account and took the money. It wasn't until people like Ron DeSantis, not a fan, but Ron DeSantis threatened to sue GoFundMe to get that money back. And what finally happened was GoFundMe had to refund the all donations. So GoFundMe said that this protest had become an occupation. In other words, they said it was an occupation to start violence. So they said in their, in their uh, small print, you can't fund an occupation whatever. Um, okay. So the insurance companies, they tried to get to them. They didn't do that. My notes are messy. I'm sorry. Um, so also half the money for the truckers came from Americans. 
half of uh, about a million dollars came from Americans. So we were mostly standing with them. A site called Give, Send, Go that I never heard of was where um, people went after GoFundMe and they did not comply with the government and they gave the Canadians uh, the money they needed, the label they needed. Um, So I have this written all over and like I was screaming, this was a nonviolent protest. So what happened was Justin Trudeau deemed the protesters terrorists and then froze their bank accounts. So if you are now a Fed now and the government decides Black Lives Matters are terrorists or um, people protesting Roe v. Wade are terrorists or pro-life people are terrorists, they can shut down your bank account. Okay, um, this is just trying to squash the dissent. By any way possible. Um, Trudeau decided he had emergency powers, which actually have never, ever been. This is the first time they've been used in Canada um, and decided the truckers were illegal and dangerous, even though there was nothing going on. But actually, the Canadian Civil Liberties said the government had no right to do that. Um, and it all worked. And actually, Technically, the truckers won. Trudeau did not say the truckers won. They used some wording to make sure they didn't. But that is just an example. If you are in the Fed now system and you go up against anything, you want nationalized health care, you want women's rights, whatever it is, whoever is in power is going to be able to shut down your bank account. Stay tuned. I'm coming back with a little more. And also, this is coming out in May. I wish I had a better answer for you, but let's see what actions are being taken. And if there are any protests, please go peacefully. This is exactly sort of the nail in the coffin of so many things. Hey, you. Yes, you. Are you looking for a new podcast that appeals to your scientific curiosity, but is also a little bit spooky? Show me how I died in a past life. Well, look no further, because this cat is where it's at. He had concerns about the ethics surrounding AI, feeling they had achieved consciousness. Curious Cat Podcast examines the shadowy space where science and the supernatural collide. Listen every week with your host, Jennifer Holtz, as she and her guests explore what it means to be a soul in a meat suit. We were healing karma together. They were all kind of predestined to, to resolve something. Listen on all your favorite streaming apps and continue the conversation on Twitter at CuriousCatPodCA or find Jennifer and all her links at Jennifer L. Holtz, spelled H-O-T-E-S, Dot com. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, my friend sent me, I'm going to read you a text message my friend Jason sent me, who knew all about this. We started getting talking about this, and so I played him that first half, and he said this, I'm seeing Fed now as a pilot program for a full-fledged CBDC. And you're right, at some point, all will be financially incentivized to adopt it, possibly through tax returns available only via CBDC or even some version of UBI after AI takes too many jobs and unemployment rates go too high. I'd only add that the programmability of CBDC is without limit. Did you tweet disinformation? No alcohol for you. Did you drive too much last week? No gas this week. Next time there's a lockdown and the government says, don't travel five miles from your home, your money won't work anywhere outside of five miles away. That's that 15 minute city, which I haven't looked at. I don't even know what that is. I walk 20 minutes outside of my house every day. So I'm not moving to a 15 minute city. Um, Next time there's a lockdown, how much can you save, spend, where, what, and when? Every purchase, if the government is sanctioned. Or they can simply set your money to expire if not used the way they wish. Your money can expire. 
Uh, it is so much more than just an on off switch. So the coin bureau has a lot on this on their channel. Okay. So I'm going to check that out. I think he meant Coinbase, which is where I have some, a little bit of money that will probably be through fed now. Now. All right. So, uh, now I want to move on to BlackRock. And have you ever had that argument with somebody and they, you say, well, they are trying to poison our food. And someone says, who are the they? The they is BlackRock. So let's get into it. So BlackRock is an organization, organization of companies. You're going to hear, we're going to talk a little bit about the French and why they're protesting BlackRock. A little bit connected. Uh, but anyways, they're an organization of companies and they manage somewhere between 10 or $14 trillion of um, assets or money or whatever, investment stuff. Then they own a majority in so many companies that they actually sort of own those companies. Are you ready for the list? Pfizer, Moderna, all the airlines, social media, Apple, Microsoft. Okay, let me look at my list over here. Berkshire Hathaway, Exxon, uh, JP Morgan, Visa, Chevron, Procter and Gamble, Home Depot, Merck, uh, a bunch of smaller ones, MasterCard, Tesla, Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, Meta Platforms, um, it just goes on and on. It, Walmart, that's the one I was looking for actually when I found this list. They own, I believe, 40, how much do they own of it? Shares own 97. Um, Verizon, Texas Instruments. Okay, so in a brilliant world takeover or whatever the hell they're doing here, Wells Fargo, Disney, Philip Morris, Raytheon, they buy up the stock so that they are the majority uh, stockholder. So that is... Uh, Amazon is the big one. Jeff Bezos is not making any more of the decision to as Amazon because he is no longer the majority shareholder. So I don't even know if we need to complain about him anymore. Okay. I'm, I'm recording this in pieces. So if I keep come on and saying, okay, it's because I have huge chunks of information and I'm going to jump around a little bit on this, but BlackRock is, uh, now linked to Coinbase. So if you know, uh, they're doing a trading platform through Aladdin. Aladdin is the AI that is doing most of, uh, taking over the world. So they created a Bitcoin to compete, uh, or, or a blockchain to compete with Grayscale. So for those of you that don't know, Grayscale is where Bitcoin and most of those places started, or it puts out a form of Bitcoin. I don't want to use Bitcoin as the only one. So BlackRock is now linked to Coinbase, um, and they are trading and getting ready for Bitcoin. So, Keep in mind, I saw this coming about a year ago when they started saying that all Bitcoin was a fraud and they were trying to make it, I don't know, illegal or they were trying to put bank regulations on it. I knew when those people up top were saying it was bad, it meant they were about to get into it. So... um Grayscale is one of those places where you would buy and sell Bitcoin, and now BlackRock wants in. Wants in. So whenever they tell you something is not good, you want to go right towards that. Another little interesting tidbit about BlackRock, they bought 22% of the houses under $500,000 last year in Atlanta. So basically you're watching all kinds of places buy up land and buy up houses. So when they buy up those houses, they don't want us in the United, well, maybe anywhere. They don't want us to own our own houses. They don't want us to grow our own food. They want us to always be paying rent to them. And you notice they weren't buying rich houses. They're buying houses that are under 500,000 because who are they going to screw first? They're going to screw the poor. So Aladdin is the IA that controls most of the wealth in any country. Um, this was created by BlackRock. It control, controls like $21 trillion in most of the global economy. So you have seen the French protesting and what they were protesting um, God, they were good or they are good. I don't know if this is over by the time that I get there, but Macron wanted to raise the age of retiree. I don't know if it was to 62 or 65, literally to add two years to their retirement. And 
you know, here in this country, people don't even realize our retirement got raised from 65 to 67. Did you guys know that? That's retirement age was raised and they're thinking of raising it to 70. And they're doing all these things while we're all arguing about Bud Light or whatever. I don't know, but the distractions here are just crazy. And we're going to get to, uh, not the Bud Light issue, but something, uh, very interesting that's also going on. So the French stormed the headquarters of BlackRock in Paris, and they were just, they said, you're not taking our pension. This should be a concern for everyone. Here is what's going on. Why the French were so mad, not only about raising the the retirement age, but that was not put up for a vote. It was not put up, uh, for whatever they have parliament or whatever. Macron just put that in order. He just decided they were raising that age. So for anybody that, uh, if uh, democracy is on its way out, that is the thing. They don't want you voting. They want you. I don't know. I can't take the politics in our country anymore. And if you're on a team, you got to get off and you got to start looking at what's going on. This is why they want TikTok banned. All this information that is coming through to the United States to sort of what I'm going to call regular people like me, who's not watching uh, companies, who's not, I own a little old Coinbase, not watching these things. All this information is out on TikTok, which puts it out everywhere. Um, now let's get into what they are doing to this country and some of the things you haven't seen and you haven't seen on the news that you should be seeing. So Sarah Huckabee Sanders is, what is she, Arkansas? Uh, she has passed two laws or bills, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to look this up. Hold on. Hey, this is true. Sarah Huckabee Sanders signs a bill rolling back child labor laws. So now you don't have to be 16 years old to get a job in Arkansas. You can do it at 13. Hooray. So we're making our retirement older and our kids go to work earlier. Um, She also signed a bill that says there's something about making the internet illegal. You have to have a driver's license to get on the the internet in Arkansas because she wants to keep kids under 16. They won't be able to get on the internet so they can work, but they can't go on the internet. Now there is something very interesting going on in Montana, Montana already banned TikTok, but I want to read to you a post from my friend, friend of the show, Danielle Agnew, who lives in Montana. So the post is from her friend, uh, Aaron Reed at Aaron in the morn. That's a pretty name. Y'all Montana HB 359, the drag ban was just amended. It could now ban glam rock, glam rock wrestling Dolly Parton. It bans obscene performances of male or female performers who adopt flamboyant or parodic, 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 I don't think they're trying to say parody, of female personas and glamorous makeup and exaggerated costumes. That is the post. So here is what my friend Danielle wrote. Just letting you all my Montana peeps know, especially those who haven't voted in a while or who need to register to vote, that while we were all living in our normal lives, our supermajority GOP is still sitting on billions of federal COVID dollars, claiming them as surplus and isn't funding schools, mental health care, retirement homes, Medicare reimbursement, uh, over 15 clothes displacing by the elders, the police, or putting money towards updating fire stations. Billings needs two more. But they can seem to find di- time to pass laws that literally prevent Dolly Parton or any flamboyant female performer from touring. This is a violation of the First Amendment. Okay. And I did this out of order because I had so many notes. I'm going to go back to BlackRock for a minute, and then we're going to go back to why they're banning all that stuff in Montana or wherever, because it's coming to a, to a theater near you. The bannings are coming pretty quick. Um, everything 
that we have a problem with in this country, whether it's guns or climate change or uh, military or gas or fossil fuels or whatever they're trying to change with cars to make them electric. Everything that we are debating, BlackRock owns a piece of. So know that none of these things are going to change because our officials and our country are in bed with BlackRock. So this is why... These things, why nothing gets done. This is why no bill will ever get passed. This is why nothing is going to change. Also, they are the leaders in deforestation and uh, fossil fuels. So you can recycle your cans all you want, but what they say is that you know, 70% of of the damage from climate change is coming from seven companies. For example, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. You can look this up. If any of these companies were to take responsibility for what they're doing, climate change would not be there. So I, I hate to say it this way, but, you know, we're recycling cans and these big companies are ruining the forests and all that stuff. So... When Facebook was making all the disinformation and taking down posts, that was not the FBI, as it was claimed. That was BlackRock because BlackRock owns parts of Facebook. And yes, Elon Musk is not perfect, but what he's doing at Twitter is better. And if you haven't seen the Twitter files, you might want to take a look at what went on there. I might have cover some of it here if I have a little more time. Now... There's another thing you haven't been aware of that has been going on for years. It is called the Alliance Defending, the Alliance for Defending Freedom, ADF. And our government is completely in bed with these people. Pull up your coffee and get ready because I'm going to read to you what the ADF does. And bear with me because I'm reading. We all know I can't read very well. Founded by some 30 leaders of the Christian right, the Alliance Defending Freedom is a legal advocacy and training group that has supported the recriminalization of sexual acts between consenting LGBTQ adults in the U.S. and criminalization abroad, has defended state sanctions to to the sterilization of trans people abroad, has contended that LGBTQ people are more likely to engage in pedophilia, and claims that a homosexual sexual agenda will destroy Christianity and and society. ADS uh, F also works to develop religious liberty legislation and cause law that will allow the denial of groups and services to the LGBT community on basis of religion. Since the election of President Trump, ADF has become one of the most influential groups in forming the administration's attack on LGBT, LGBTQ rights. The ADF, which I'm just going to throw this in, don't think Biden's going to help you with this at all. This this is already embedded in there. He's such a disappointment. So don't think he's going to change this. The ADF also works to develop religious liberty legislation and can cause laws that will allow the denial of goods and services to the LGBTQ people on the basis of religion. Despite its regular defamation of LGBTQ, the LGBTQ people, the group has managed to win special advisory status in the United States, in European Union, and with organizations of American st- So as you go through, you can see certain things like Attorney Jeff Sessions delivers remarks at the Alliance for Defending Freedom Summit. U.S. Senate ad- advances legislation disrespecting marriage. Uh, let me read this one for you. Let me see if I can get it. U.S. Senate advances legislation disrespecting marriage and endangering religious rights. The following quotes may be attributed to the Alliance Defending Freedom CEO, President and General Counsel Christine Wagner. Oh, wait, this wasn't what I want. I'm sorry. Oh, these people are horrible. They're making me sick. You know what? I'm kind of done on that topic for the moment, but I just want you to know these people have been embedded in our government for a very long time. And if you can tell from what's going on in Montana and with Sarah Huckabee Sanders, they're starting to gain some ground. This is it, people. This is the year that we change it or we just turn into a third world country or worse. Our rights are really being taken away and it's time. I hope... By the time this comes out, the United States 
is in the streets like France is. I don't know what everybody's waiting for, but I feel like the distractions that are on the news all the time, that is this little stuff, uh, this, you know, who's mad at who celebrity crap. It is just keeping us from knowing what's really going on. Look at those people in France. You're not getting anything past them. Okay, so maybe I'll do another uh, podcast on this, but I think I've tired myself out for tonight. So what you want to do, folks, is you want to look up what the Twitter files are. If you don't know, do not look on NPR, do not look on MSNBC, do not look on Fox News. You want to find this from an alternative news source, probably on YouTube, and you want to find out who Matt Taibbi is. So the Twitter files, the Twitter flies, the Twitter flies, Uh, Elon Musk, this is why Elon Musk, part of what his Twitter takeover is and what so many people are mad at is it was showing all the emails between the government officials and Twitter, and the government was telling Twitter who to knock off and whose tweets to uh, block, whose was marked as disinformation when they were not. And it's literally, if you look at Twitter and you look at Facebook and you look at all the government overreach or the BlackRock overreach, uh, you're going to start to wonder if you really actually have any more freedom in this country. So uh, that's it. That's all the stuff I wanted to get out. Now, our next portion of the show <laughs> is actually really great and much lighter. Uh, my friend Kat uh, created a beautiful tarot deck. So she is going to turn this podcast around. Um, hang on, everybody. Uh, stay tuned for that. You're going to feel a lot better. Many people are unaware just how much hypnotherapy can help them or think it's only to help lose weight or quit smoking. But there is so much more hypnotherapy can do. It can help with stress, anxiety, insomnia, phobias, performance enhancement, connecting with your spirit guides and higher self. You can even discover past lives and your life between lives. Heal traumas, Break habits, find your deepest truth, or just have fun discovering who you really are, all from the comfort of your home. I'm Monique Pliakis. I'm a certified hypnotherapist, and I want to help you. Schedule a free consult by going to www.innerstandingshypnosis.com. That's I-N-N-E-R-S-T-A-N-D-I-N-G-S-H-Y-P-N-O-S-I-S.com. Understandings hypnosis. Find your power and ignite your inner light. Hey, everybody. I know that last uh, part of the podcast was a little intense, but it's what we need to know. So I'm pushing this podcast out. And now I have the loveliest guest who is getting gypped because she only gets 20 minutes or 30 minutes. We're just going to keep going. But my friend Kat Crow is here. Kat, you sent me, uh, you got a Kickstarter going on for a deck, Oracle deck called the Inner Mask Deck. That is so beautiful. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Tell me, you're an artist. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Give everybody your bio, uh, your bio snapshot. Oh, thank you, Karen. I'm so glad you like it. Um, Yeah, I am an artist, a writer, a creator of a lot of different things. Um, My Instagram is Conscious Dust, so you can kind of like see all the different types of things that I do. Mm -hmm. And one that I have been um, creating in the last couple of years have been, I've, I've created a few Oracle decks, no tarot <sighs> yet, but I have created a couple of Oracle decks. And so I have one on Kickstarter right now and it's called the Inner Mask Oracle deck. And it's really different from all of my other decks, all my other works. And I I think it's pretty unique among most other Oracle decks. It's got a few things that other Oracle decks just don't have. It's got, um, first of all, I, it, I, I created this deck a long time ago. I created the art for this deck while I was backpacking across Eastern Europe. Oh. Yeah, I, I had the, the concept for this this being called the inner mask actually like dawned on me while I was still an undergrad in college as an art major. And I was trying to think of a final project, but I knew that I would not get approval from 
the uh, art department heads uh, to do this project then. So I kind of just put it into my notebook. And then after after college, I a little bit later, like just sold all my belongings and left the country. (laughs) And I in like Czech Republic and, and Slovakia and Hungary and Romania and so on, like just backpacking for a period of time. And then I started to just make these drawings of this being, which is called the inner mask. And and this was in uh, 2004, five, six. So I didn't even have an iPhone. I didn't have, you know, there was not... Yet. There was not Facebook yet. There was not Twitter yet. I didn't know. Re- I didn't have a lot of experience with tarot decks or with anything of this guy. I was coming in. I had been at like an, like I was, I was telling some other people my like spiritual awakening journey has been kind of funny. I was an atheist for a very long time. And even while I was working on this thing that I kind of knew was probably an, a, tarot deck of some sort Mm -hmm. i was still holding on to this note but i'm a i'm a a serious minded you know uh logical person i'm not (laughs) i'm drawing these drawings it's fine i i it was just so funny um you know i i i want to i want to go back one question why did you think your uh the elitist at your art school or your teachers would not like this would it be oh go ahead yeah, uh, you know what? It was, um, I just, by the time I was a senior, so I knew like my, when I was a freshman as an art student, I'm, I'm going to just like, I'm going to just like try and, and say this in like the nice way so that I don't feel <laughs> like throwing any, you, you know, they had a very specific idea and you know what, this is like, some of the things which, you know, if you go to college and like you, you go in the art department and, you know, every art, every college that is like art is not their main thing. It's like they have all the subjects and then art is one department. So the art department has to kind of like figure out what it means by art. And mm-hmm. so for this art department, it was very much like conceptual art. Like we're talking the kind of art which you go into a museum and and you see a a, a stick in the floor in a, with a hole around it, and it's called whatever uh, the perceptual inte- integration of in- ingenuity in our time. And it's <laughs> right, and and so it's like you need to to understand. Like this is what they thought of as like high art it's like like you need an education to to even connect with it and so I like come in as a freshman and I'm like I want to make giant dolls and the first year they were okay with that but then they started to slowly like try and like turn what we were all doing what I was doing you know and and you just you just could see this like no don't I I in my sophomore year, again, hilarious that I wanted to make a shrine as a, as an art piece. And my professor told me no. And, and she didn't really give a reason, but I kind of knew the reason was that it didn't fit into that narrative. Um, yeah. It's like this specific, like, um, high education, uh, type of art, like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, mass mocha kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, they had us, they had us like looking at specific artists like Barbara Kruger and Cindy Sherman, who like, it was all about like society and making like a statement about Mm. society, but in a certain understanding and a certain way. And so like, like sliding off into, uh, you know, I, I, too illustrative would be considered like, um, you, you know, to, to mass entertainment and sliding into, uh, uh, metaphysical would be not analytical enough and not, uh, you know, uh, uh not, not, uh, right. not question things. Right. So there were a lot of reasons why I knew that, uh, I just, I just, I just knew that, that the, the, high, that the ones in charge of the art department would, we're Scott. not going to let what I want to do. Yeah. So. Well, I, and I also, this is really weird, but this is my intuition as you tell me is, yeah. um, 
it is it has landed exactly where it should so either they would have ruined it <laughs> or maybe yeah. you wouldn't have had the enthusiasm but this is now it's it does it say here it's 60 cards right 64 right yeah right yeah and i i i drew a lot i drew more there's more drawings that i drew during that period when i was in europe in my backpack there's like 70 i don't even know i haven't really counted but i'd made a lot of drawings and i just like you know it's a selection of them that is in the deck uh it's really uh i'm getting this deck period whenever we when we hang up i'm getting and i see you have all these different pledges where people can get the book or the a picture postcard or the right. deck and it's and folks it's really uh you got to go because this is not outrageous this is not four hundred dollars for a deck or something <laughs> crazy and you're almost to your full uh that's fantastic but i'd imagine that this is almost just people buying this deck just it, it is really incredible as I'm looking, it's not just the artwork. So can I to ask about like, well, you have two cards here that I can't stop looking at. So I want to oh. ask how the inspiration came. Yeah. Which ones are you looking at? So you have one where it's called perspective and oh. the person, the uh, inner mask is yeah. hanging a window. Yeah. higher than the other like there's so much i can without making you like you know go over what was it says so much a higher perspective he is hanging the higher perspective um mm -hmm. tell me about that where did that come from an incident in your life did you just channel it what is happening i think channeling it would probably be the closest because like this was like one of like when you're when you're when you're just like you, you have like this like you know you have your 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 sketchbook that you're carrying around with you and you you have officially opened this door in your head to what this character is is all about and and like you you you're just occasionally you're just getting downloads randomly that go in the sketchbook sometimes five at a time sometimes just one big one sometimes like a whole bunch of half ones that don't make sense to later and it's like this one was like it was it was um i know the one you're talking about the 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 one in your mask is like standing on a ladder inside the room hanging up the window the, uh, uh, yeah higher than the other window yeah. And so it's like, it's like, um, it's got, it's got a surrealism vibe mm -hmm. of like, you know, like those, those kind of like artworks from like, uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting names right now. But That's like, all right. I wouldn't know your, the names anyway. So you could ah, say, Jerry, uh, you could say your neighbor's name and I'd go, oh yes, I know his work <laughs> very well. Um, yeah. How long does it, I, I suppose each card is different. How long does it do take to do each card? You know what? Um, they're very small. The artworks were on A5. In, in Europe, they have like their paper is like in a different, they don't have eight and a half by 11. They have like A5, A3, A4, A6. And so like A5 is like if you fold an eight and a half by 11 paper in half, except not really, it, okay. it, like. It almost fits. So, so these are very small and like, uh, they're just drawn in like pencil and, and like some in ballpoint pen. Cause those are what I had with me that could fit in my backpack, like at the time. And so, um, yeah, cause the whole project had to like be on my back while I was like jumping on the back of trains and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so it, it was, it was not taking me very long. Some of the, but you know what? Some of them, I would draw them and then not be happy and then drew them, sure. did them over again. And then sometimes I, it didn't, uh, sometimes it did work the second times and sometimes it did not. So, yeah. Um, um, so, and so this deck, it looks like, well, no, I'm going to take, I was going to say this looks like inner work, but actually that when someone asks a question, uh, even in it, like if someone calls me for reading and I'm talking and I'm like, let's take a different perspective on this. This still works. This would be good for, um, probably anything, but I, I'm getting this for when people say, uh, let's simplify this. People say, what's wrong with me or why oh. can't I get over this or why, you know, and not a future prediction, but like a, what's going on in me. This looks yeah. brilliant. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you would use it. You would be like, I'm really stuck here. Let me pull some cards. Yeah. I, you know what? Um, I've had the opportunity now to see it used by a lot of different people. And it's, it, it seems like no two people use it in the exact same way. Like some people relate to the deck and they think immediately it's about shadow work because some of the, and it depends on which cards they see first. And that's almost like the first reading that it, they get. And some, some, there are some kind of, you could say more like dark leaning, or that's just the way it might hit certain people because some of these cards are really like like to do with really like um like uh like like some real like sort of semi real world ish like topics or mm-hmm. like some like childhood trauma inspired um uh thoughts and so i mean some of these 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 cards are really like um going into that whole dimension of experience and really like sort of bringing them to the surface. That's how some people I have seen like immediately encounter this deck and they, 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 they go in the deck and the first one they see is is the one called the monster or the, the (laughs) one. Yeah. And, and, and then, um, or, or like, uh, or the 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 third mirror and that that particular one hits everyone a different way like some people see it as a very um sort of like uh, uh it 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 stirs them in ways they're maybe not ready but other people see it as a very um illuminating thing that's the that's the one where the inner mask is sitting and looking at a little sort of like miniature of itself and and a mirror hangs in its own face and it's it's like the the reflection of the illusion of the face is really like kind of in the place where the face would be and for some people that's like a very like a like a like a lingering um you know uh feeling and um so some people it's like kind of calling them to shadow work i've seen that happen and i've seen like people react to that different but not everybody not everybody like kind of meets it that way and so i feel like um it has several different uses and it might be really um an interesting thing for someone who is thinking about shadow work or inner child work Mm -hmm. but there are other people who seem to not see it that way and to see it as a as a as a, in a different kind of aspect of their spirituality and and their development. Yes, but it, it, I'm sure so, because you could even the card that I liked there that was perspective, you mm. could actually see that as you're getting a new perspective or mm. new new windows are opening up, new things you didn't see before are coming. So it really yeah. is, but it's so fascinating. This is just <laughs> um do you get, this is probably a random question, but yes. uh, since I started painting, I'm painting butterflies. So that's where oh. I, that's where I am in my art career. I just did a bicycle and I'm doing butterflies. <laughs> so of course I'm an, I'm an expert now. Um, <laughs> did you feel you got the pictures first or the meanings first, or you don't know, I just sat down with a pen and pencil. That's a good question. I feel like there are, there were moments when the two came at the same time. And so the sketchbook, the, the, there's a picture and like all these words, like side by side, like, like there, there were definitely moments where those two things like were somehow in a bundle. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But there were others where the picture came and I didn't have uh, words for them for whatever reason. I had to think up words a lot later um, to to say what I, to just put it in words. Um, Yeah. Now with a Kickstarter, if you go over, like if everybody orders this deck, like immediately, you just, it's (laughs) no big deal, right? It's when you go under, is under a problem? What happens when you go under? Yeah, if don't meet the goal of a Kickstarter, then all the money is um, just it, it. It it is said to be a uh, it didn't fund, and um, so then uh, you know uh, you don't get any of the money. Is what yeah. happens if you reach the goal in Kickstarter? Yes, that is the intensity of Kickstarter. Yes. Oh, yes. okay. You'll hear. But, actually, it's funny. I was talking about Kickstarter in controversy before but you're going to make your kickstarter because you're already there while we're taping it will be yeah yeah 
Oh, that's yeah. great. And tell me, uh, you do other Oracle decks too. Do decks, are doing decks, that seems like an enormous project to me. It, yeah, I. that's one reason why I still haven't um, finished a tarot deck yet. Uh, the, the the number of cards is just a lot mm-hmm. of, uh, of work. Um, but I... Yeah, and oracle oracle cards are interesting because they can be anything. And um, uh, you know, I I I I've done two other oracle decks that I've put out, and um, people people can find the links to them in my Instagram. Um, the is, one is one is called um, the Utopian Futhark, and it's based on the runes. And there's twenty four runes in the nordic rune system so i created a deck of cards in like collage and uh so it's like digital collage totally different art style so uh i i just like used photoshop and did a collage of of all these like different photographic elements to explain what each rune means because the runes are kind of a collage of meanings on their own. Like, like one rune can mean fire and also love and also knowledge. So how do these three concepts all combine into one? And so like, I figured like a, a collage was a good way to pick, to, to depict the meanings of these runes. So that one is available on my Etsy right now and also on a website called Game Crafter, which I will have the link for. And then, uh, yeah, I also did another one. Uh, uh, and, oh. and, I, and I also want to say, you, I'm at your link tree, so you're going to add that link because I don't think that one's there yet, right? You know what? I will. I will be adding that one. Um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing for me to for me to have there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'm my, obsessed with octopuses. So I'm looking at your oh, other, uh, oh. where you can buy everything, all the pictures and your art. It's just fantastic. I'm on uh-huh. society six. Oh yeah. I have a society six page as well, where you can see some t-shirts and things and, uh, no, no inner mask stuff yet on the society six. I don't know. Maybe I'll put something in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, um, it's really just fantastic. Uh, can you give any advice to anyone that is um, thinking of taking on something like this, like uh, uh, doing their own deck? I have an idea for a deck, but it's like mm. literally four cards. Like I'm not, I- you know. Hey, four cards. You can you can make the art very quickly uh, <laughs> with, with, with that. It's and then he, and then you're done. Um, I, yeah. Oddly enough, the art so far is a bicycle and a butterfly. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, the cool thing is, like, for an oracle deck, your art is simple as you want, mm-hmm. and um, it's all about it's it's the art and the mean and the words is like kind of half the picture, and then the other half is what happens when the reader uh, sees it in a reading, and that's really like you know you you you, you create the art in the oracle cards, and that's just like this like platform or stage where the actual event that's going to happen later you know forever after in all the minds of all the people that are ever going to read the deck uh you know um what what is going to happen for them in a reading or in just enjoyment of the cards whatever um you know whatever whatever the case may be but um yeah so so you don't have to worry about making cards that uh, you know, are, are, are magnificently perfect works of art or something, they could be simple. And um, because, uh, you, you know, uh, a lot of things, a lot of things can, can come from very simple mm. uh, artworks in uh, the reader's mind. So, yes, that's fantastic. Um, so, so tell everyone, so we're going to have your Instagram and we're going to have your link tree and yeah. I think everyone's going to get this. To, and I love it this way because I, I've, uh, there was another one. Ashley Stinson did a great deck also, but I love that the deck is already done. Like you've already, this is it and you're getting yep. something with it and it, you're getting this beautiful deck or postcards or something. So I hope everybody goes, checks this out. Cause it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Um, so everybody can find you on Instagram. Uh, let me see. I got your Instagram right yeah. open. I got 17 uh, windows open and they're all you. <laughs> and I'm like, I need that as octopus shirt. And I need that deck. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's a typical manifesting generator with you to have like like 30 or 40 tabs open i think is <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's well that's me anyways like i'm afraid because i know if i bookmark it i'm not gonna look back i have to like go back to my bookmarks right oh me neither <laughs> <laughs> seriously Okay, this is wonderful. Okay, so the the everything is going to be in the notes, everybody. But you want to go to at Conscious Dust on Instagram. You want to follow that account, anyways. And then we have the Inner Mask, which is what we're talking about with the Kickstarter. It is. This is coming out on May fifth. You actually only have a couple days left with it, right? Right. It's uh, ending on May ten, okay. or is it eleven? Actually, it's May eleven in the morning. So. Just make just, just to make sure to that you uh, get on there May ten, um, so that you make your decision by before you know the morning. You know is in like going to be a different time in every time zone, so that's going to be you know right. uh, you have all night May ten. <laughs> and if you're a tarot reader, remember you you buy this, you uh, can write it off. If you're studying tarot, it's you can write it off. So everyone buy it and write it off. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Cat. Um, Cat Crow, you know what? Send me whenever you do your next one or whatever. You're just lovely. And um, this is a wonderful sort of cap on an intense podcast that I wanted to get out. So this worked Ooh. out perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yes, sure thing. Will do. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, you hang on. I'm going to talk to you after the this uh, okay. closeout. Mike, <laughs> uh, thanks to Mike at Una Rising Media. Thank you, everybody. Uh, take care. We are in May. This is May 5th. I wonder, uh, I forgot to put some of this promo on some of my other stuff. You can see me May 28th in Massachusetts. New, uh, I just had it in front of me. I'm going to be working. I'm going to be working with Jimmy Dore. I'm opening for Jimmy Dore in uh, New Hampton, Northampton, Massachusetts. Let me double check. You'll see it. It's him, not me. Uh, and I'm putting out a whole bunch of dates. And uh, the end of the year is packed, everybody. Uh, Ogden, Utah, um, uh, Cal Upper California, Alameda, California, Los Angeles doing flappers, doing bring psychic stand up there, funniest housewives, all over the place. Dubai. I think I have one listener in Dubai. I'll see you in Dubai. All coming up. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Join the Patreon. Paranormal Care.